uh, with diligence and let's go to the initial verse. We need deep wisdom and great dharma. Just as a big container must have a big cover. So why um, make, because remember some time back, Master mentioned what is a voice after? A voice after is a great being. So therefore, and then obviously um, this cover that we have um, is, um, I, I think you can take it from the context that we shouldn't, um, of course it must be practice uh, this great wisdom and great dharma without any wisdom leaks. So we, and, and with an awakened nature and ocean of wisdom, we can no inexhaustible teachings. Uh, two, I think there are two angles to this. One is what right, Masek explained in the past. When you listen to the teaching, you realize one and you open a thousand. So therefore, the thing is, the most difficult part of it is to realize the first one. And um, I think it's hard to explain uh, unless you really experience it. Um, and you've got to put in a lot of great efforts um, to have that understanding of what you call unobstructed uh, meaning. And this is called spiritual insights. And even in the spiritual insights to have the unobstructed meaning, the different levels, uh, level from uh, beginning with uh, inner knowing and, um, and going towards uh, uh, intuitive uh, knowing. So then the Tathagata is one with compassion, impartiality, and the wisdom of all Dharma. And mostly impartiality is the absolute uh, wisdom and the wisdom of all Dharma. And this wisdom of all Dharma, um, you know, when I first uh, heard about the boy sort of vows, which is the vow number three, to enter all Dharma doors, all Dharma doors, not just one, two, or three. And Dharma doors are innumerable. A vow to enter them on, enter the vow. And um, I am just wondering how do we, what was the understanding of that? And this is this line that I think sort of explains that. And uh, this is apparently the absolute uh, wisdom. And um, the good thing about it, and one master must have said in one of the sharing was, um, is to say that if you understand uh, the Dharma, the Buddha Dharma, uh, that will have access. Uh, you penetrate all the other Dharma because the teaching of all Buddhas are the same. So master's explanation, dwelling deeply into the Sutra, sutra treasury does not mean spending all day in the Sutra library. But to comprehend a great path by putting the Dharma into practice and walk the broad path. You see, this is the part that um, about the mind and the consciousness. And uh, so the first part of this line under the semicolon is about the mind. Spending all day in Sutra Library, um, that is purely you can know about the Sutra. You can even understand the sutra to your best of your mental capability, but that's it, that's the limit. Now, if you then understand that part I just mentioned, and then you go back to the 37 practice, factors of enlightenment and um, the fourfold mindfulness, right? The first part of which the four, four out of the 37. Now, of the fourfold mindfulness, if you remember, uh, the third one, and the one says, the mind is impermanent. So whatever you store in this mind that you have, this mind is attributable to this life. So when it's attributed to this life and mind is impermanent, um, so it's like, a, it's like a memory storage, right? A battery runs out at the end of life and, and um, that's the end of the matter. That the next life that we are born in will have a mind of that particular body. 
So how then we can practice into the mind continuum and be able to take on the way I practice in the past. So I think this, this uh, I think there's some of the question uh, I, I often contemplate upon and how would one uh, be able to, is there uh, a storage space in the cloud somewhere that I can store my knowledge? I subscribe to that cloud and therefore in, uh, I when I use a computer, uh, next to another computer, I can extract uh, what I have done in the past. But, so this is, I mean, I'm just using a metaphor uh, trying to explain to you. Uh, and this is the part that practicing into the mind continuum. And that continuum is to have that knowledge of the wisdom, not so much of the knowledge, but the wisdom uh, into that continuum and having that imprint uh, into that uh, cloud, which is actually the metaphor that I use for your higher consciousness. And that's the reason why uh, it's hard for one to progress well if we just know and understand. So, but to comprehend the great path by putting the Dharma into practice and walk the broad path. And this is the part that when you walk, when you're putting the Dharma into practice, you, when you, came, you came what you call experiential learning, right? which I explained to you yesterday. So in this experiential learning, and this is one that, I mean, the same way, in the same way as you started your working life, Right? You work, you learn the trick, the tricks of the trade, um, you hone your skills. But as you do that, you know that you grow in your wisdom learning because you learn from experience. So that's why when you recruit people, they always ask how many years of experience that you have. Because a lot of things that from the experience, and that is the wisdom learning that cannot be taught in books. And in the same way that we practice the Dharma knowing it's not enough to put into practice. But the problem that we have, and like what Sister Irene quite rightly pointed out, much that uh, she knows the Dharma, she tried to practice the lot of hindrances that comes about, and we all do. Okay, and the, 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 the hindrances come to, come to us in different forms, in different ways. So, and it is the part that is upholding the mind which is very important because when you uphold the mind, irrespective of whatever hindrances you face, irrespective of what people throw mud at you, you still uphold the, virtu the virtuous thoughts. You still uphold uh, the Dharma in you and you still uphold the good intention uh, within you. And that is the one that is very important. And then when you do that, over time, obviously it has to be that it become a habit that your mind will be changed, your mind will be transformed. So this about all these things, all these practices, it's about transformation of our habitual tendencies. Because if a habitual tendency is to react to a moment, therefore uh, we, you, you, you can say that we are out of our mind because it just come, we just react, our anger will just flare up. But if you observe your mind and observe your mind so that before that unwholesome thought arises, you subdue that uh, until an unwholesome thought cannot arise. So obviously this takes years and years of practice. And when you get into uh, this practice, and uh, you will find that um, you will be able to overcome a lot of hindrances and afflictions. But you need great efforts to apply that. You got to be patient. That's why in the six parameters, um, one of the, to me, of the six parameters, the two that I all relate to uh, very much is about patience and perseverance. And perseverance is part of your diligent practice. So we also need to understand, my must always say, be diligent in your practice, be diligent in practice. So when someone, when, when an obstacle that comes in front of us, when people say something to us, and people tend to be very sensitive, right? Uh, we heard from 
So, so say something behind your back and the third person will come and tell you what, is, what he or she said about you. And, um, and we shouldn't get afflicted by that. And you know what, if, if people keep doing that to you, and to me, I think they are your spiritual benefactors because it helps to tame your mind. You tame your mind to the extent that you're no longer disturbed by what other people say about you. So an enlightened beings only see one side and not the other. There's a limit to what we know. An enlightened being only see one side. The reason is because we, we only see with our eyes in front. We do not have the consciousness of 360 degrees and the 10 directions. Now 10 directions is, is 360 degrees is, is only eight directions. Now north, south, north, south, east, west. Um, uh, northwest, northeast, southeast, and southwest. But the 10 direction is up and down the soul. So, therefore, um, that's what we are because our, you see, in the practice, when we start to learn the Jama, we walk the journey, we rely on our external faculties. Our external faculties are our five senses and our mind. And that's how we've been brought up, and that's the worldly ways. But the practice of the Dharma has to go beyond your external faculties. It's the developing your inner faculties so that you have inner seeing, inner hearing. And that's where your consciousness starts to unfold, when you have inner seeing. Sometimes um, when, um, when you practice, inner seeing is the seeing with, beyond your eyes. But not only that, an inner seeing can even allow you to listen. And even inner hearing, I can allow you to see. And, um, and when that is, when that, with that, you can then understand why I've said uh, to, to you all and explain that the Dharma is actually contained beyond words. So when we listen to the Dharma, we just, we don't listen as I, explain to you, just don't listen just with your ears. Because obviously at the beginning, you listen to your ears. But as you contemplate, when you listen, you listen with your heart, and that's inner hearing. And the inner hearing, when, when it's well done, you listen, you're actually hearing, you'll be hearing your own questions. The question is coming out. And that question uh, is actually the question to answer that you hear. You see, the great thing about uh, um, the Dharma is this. Normally, in a way, worldly ways, right? We ask a question, we get an answer, right? But you know that in Dharma, they give you the answer, and you don't even know what the question is. So the answer comes first, and the question comes later. And um, so therefore, if you then listen, with your inner ears and we have the heart. That's why you, um, when you listen to the Dharma, you listen to the question in your heart. And, and you know that you get it because you, you come that moment and you say, Master was so right. It was so applicable to me. He answered my question, you see? And that is what realization is about. And it comes to you and it said, it gave me the answer. The question has been in my heart. And when you do that and you, then you realize the profound meaning of that teaching and realizing that's one teaching and you contemplate further on that one teaching that you realize. Then you realize you are beginning to unfold the next one. The next one you contemplate further and further and further the third one and so on and so forth. And so therefore, this is the practice that we should gain to understand. So we must seek to understand and investigate the Buddha Dharma to understand the true principles. So even the Buddha said, when the Buddha Dharma, go and ask the question yourself, investigate it. And that is called investigative wisdom um, of the Buddha Dharma. That question it, and then in your own contemplation, to come out with your own profound answers. But sometimes 
um, obviously try try as we may, we don't know. But the answer is then ask the question. Ask the ask that question to to Brother Joe Huang and, and have we have the platform here. So that, therefore um, you can then understand why the Dharma cannot be learned in the normal way. So we are enlightened beings, we are covered by ignorance. So we the book the the, the um, you see when we learn in school, the knowledge is outside, we bring them in, right? But in the Buddha Dharma, the Buddha nature is already inside you. The problem is only we are covered by ignorance, and this is what we need to take off. So for us to take off, you got to go inside. You see, in knowledge, we go outside to learn. In the Buddha Dharma, we can need to go inside because it's already in there. So that's the difference between learning the worldly ways and learning the spiritual ways. So in, in learning the Buddha Dharma, we need to come up with ways to eliminate that ignorance that is covering us. And we, we'll cover it. So therefore, we got to go inside to remove the cover. So by, by getting more and more knowledge, it's not going to, it's not going to enlighten us. Um, you can go spend all day in a sort of library and it's not going to enlighten us at all. And I know it's going to gain you any realization. So the lessons learned here is um, the ability to know and understand all in and out of in our manner is known as the wisdom of law and dharma. And um, I just explained to you the in and out of in all manner. Yes, we still have to learn what's outside. That the reason is because why is this out of the norm and we did learn? It's because we walk in a boy's other path. So after our realization, we go into practice, we want what we undertake to help liberate others. So therefore, we help to liberate others. Um, we got to we'll be interacting with people, methods, and objects. So, but if our inner cultivation is well practiced then we will be growing in equanimity that will no longer be afflicted by whatever conditions that come to us, um, whether in people, whatever people may say, uh, other matters that come to us, and these are matters can come to us in the form of conditions um, and objects that we see or touch or feel. So, um, and this is, um, about the four great vows, right? I just mentioned to you the first great vow is to help deliver all ascendant beings. And, um, and inevitably, you will have to interact with the outer phenomena. So, unlike this being a solitary realizer, and we can, and this purely on in the culti in the, in the, um, in the cultivation. So, we got to go to both the inner and the outer. So, including the vow to learn innumerable Dharma laws, we seek in all four directions. And this is about seeing beyond one side. The ability to know and understand all in and out of phenomena means in inwardly we must cultivate ourselves. Inwardly, we need to cultivate ourselves is to grow in your inner faculty because you need the power of your inner faculty to grow in realization and grow in your higher consciousness. And that's the reason why uh, Master has been uh, saying that in the flawless, the three flawless study, uh, precept, samadhi, and wisdom. Now, in the samadhi, samadhi is necessary for inward cultivation. Because why is samadhi necessary? Because we need to shut off our external faculties to be able to go to cultivate internally. So you understand then the purpose of why uh, Samadhi uh, is important. Because if our mind continue to graduate towards the noise outside, how can we be in practice? Um, how can we contemplate? How can we realize? And outwardly, we must experience people, matters, and things to comprehend all worldly and world transcendent things. And this is the outward cultivation I just explained. Now, 
The other point about our value we must experience people is this. So sometimes uh, when we interact, much that we learn in, inwardly to know our mind and observe our mind, we must also be very mindful of the thought of others. When we are mindful of the thoughts of others, then we will, uh, we'll, we will then be harmonious in how uh, we serve uh, and interact with people. And uh, this is very important to establish a harmonious relationship with all being. And that is an aspiration we undertake to create good affinities. If our power of faith is deep, we can accept the Buddha Dharma. Why the faith is got to be deep? Because we are unenlightened beings. The Buddha is an un fully enlightened being. He has already been attained enlightenment. We haven't traveled the path yet. We haven't reached there yet. So we need to have the faith and trust in the Buddha Dharma. So this deep faith that when we progress in our practice, we, we could be stepping on, we, we, in the past, we, when we progress, we will be stepping onto um, things that we have never experienced before in experiential learning. And you will have doubts, but it's okay. If you have doubt, then you go to practice investigative wisdom. But if you just have doubt and does not engage further in the investigative wisdom and then be stuck. So this is, um, uh, uh, this is part of the, uh, the four, the four, power, the four bases of fulfilling powers. The four bases of fulfilling power, number one, you have your aspiration. You need to have the effort. And then you need to have, to have your thoughts, your thoughts to, 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 to um, of the discerning mind. And then the investigative wisdom. And then for you to delve in, um, uh, into the teachings and so that your faith is then well addressed. When we accept it with unwavering resolve, a firm power of mindfulness, we can uphold it. And this unwavering resolve is by having a disciplined practice. And, and then you also need to understand how do you uphold a discipline strictly? And this requires great commitments. So to accept and uphold means to have deep faith and a stable mind. So deep faith, which I have just explained to you, and a stable mind. This stable mind is about having discipline. That means you're no longer you no longer be um, wavering on all the side shows that you see in your life and whatever condition that come what may, uh, you're able to deal with it. And this is the strength of a stable mind. Actually in contemplation today, I, I prepared a very short contemplation because I thought time is limited. So, um, but we can spend some time to discuss about other things. The past is for you to learn from not to live in. You see, in a, in a cultivation, um, people comes, uh, a lot of people that I met in the course of my journey, I come across a lot of people have very difficult backgrounds. Um, or they come in, uh, they've done a lot of things, they have a lot of regrets. Um, you learn from that but do not live in it because it's not, the past is gone, nothing you can do. But all these our life becomings, our life becomings that come to us is for us to learn. Okay, otherwise one cannot progress. In the same way, the future is not for you to evolve to. It's, sorry, the future is for you to evolve to, not to expect. What is the difference between uh, the two? You see, expectation. Do you know that expectation is a cause of unhappiness? Because when things are expected, you are happy. And then when the, when the expectation um, is satisfied, um, your happiness dies down, you have the next, next expectation. And that's us in the desirous realm. And when your expectation is not met, you become unhappy. 
So evolve, the future is for you to evolve too. It's for us to reach, read our aspiration. So we will we, we evolve with our aspiration, just like that. Our master's been telling us, uphold your aspirational vows so that can evolve to a Bodhisattva. Practicing in the moment of here and now from the lessons wisely learned, and that is important. So as we accept our life and our life will flow, whatever it come to us, you got to learn those lessons in life because the, the, the lessons that you learn is uniquely yours. My lessons for mine and your lessons for you. And you know why they're so unique? Because our karmic blueprint are different. So that lesson that comes to you uh, will be different from the lessons come to me uh, because there's things that I need to correct myself. These lessons come to us because we need to correct ourselves. If you are already corrected, okay? If you are already corrected, the so-called events that come to you, you are no longer afflicted by it. And you know that. So for example, um, uh, somebody will, uh, uh, so, just say someone uh, is easy to, is very sensitive and it flares up into anger quite easily, right? It's short tempered. Now, when, but other person is not, now there are other person who say that, what well, must this is a small matter, why you get so sensitive about it? So this is, you know that you have corrected yourself by those, uh, the signs that come to you. So therefore, once you've done that, different lessons will come, even bigger lessons will come. And even for Moglana, um, and Moglana is one of the two senior disciples of the Buddha, right? And he even had a Mara challenging him. And obviously, because he's a highly cultivated person, he has, he, he is psychic. In fact, amongst all the uh, Buddha disciples, as far as I know, Moglana has a higher psychic power. And uh, despite that, Mara could enter into his stomach, but he knew. And, and uh, Mara was very surprised that he knew and he thought he could actually uh, hide away from Moglana. And he was inside and he asked, and he asked uh, Mara uh, to come out uh, and he spit out uh, Mara from his stomach. So all these lessons will come to us, even when the state where you can attain the first level enlightenment, even at a hard level. Uh, even the Buddha, the Buddha was challenged by Mara before he attained. After attaining enlightenment, Buddha was challenged by Mara. And Mara asked him, uh, he's, he was so attained fully enlightenment, and he asked Buddha, what proof have you got that you're fully enlightened? And you may have heard that I mentioned that he put uh, the right palm uh, pointing to the ground, which represents that earth is my witness. And Buddha has been here for um, many, many lifetimes since so practice, and he knew that the earth was a witness. And um, so, and possibly because of that, Mara was defeated. So same thing with us. Even, even if the Buddha was being challenged with all these lessons, what are these small lessons to us? And that's therefore, uh, what has happened in the past, leave it. Don't think about the future, it's for us to grow into. And more importantly, is take the lessons that we have in front of us right now. So this is to evolve in your spiritual aspiration, right? And this is what evolve is that I just mentioned to you. And we're after the spiritual aspiration, which is here, the boys are our, our vows that we have. So in relationship, there's only a two-liner about aspirational relationship that we have. Just remember, when you hold the aspiration, uh, aspiration inspires you. It's just like how you, you, you want to aspire to have a harmonious relationship, uphold a harmonious relationship, aspiration in you, right? because it inspires you. But the thing is, expectation consumes you, and that's the difference between aspiration and expectation. Expectation will consume your energy because you expect happiness out of it. Okay, take that note. Thank you. Can earn brother Chin for the very superb. Can earn. Oh, uh, 
sharing. Indeed, our brother. Uh, unlimited, unlimited time today, so I tell stories. Uh, please, uh, Gaen, <laughs> we are truly treasure that. Okay, we.